You've tried and failed to be a morning person. Started a new diet. Again. You've got that brand new pair of running shoes you're going to put on any day now. Or so you've been saying for three years. Like us, you're a fit mess. Or are you? Our guest this week might call you something else. She might just say you're bio-curious. This is a fit mess with Zach and Jeremy. All right, let's get messy. I'm Jeremy, he's Zach, and this is the Fit Mess Podcast. Thanks for listening. Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, we'll be joined in a few minutes by our guest this week. Her name is Kayla Osterhoff. She's from the BioCurious Podcast. Lots of great information about nutrition, about mind-body wellness, all kinds of good stuff to help uh, help you experiment with your biohacking, uh, as we have uh, come to, to enjoy doing ourselves. And one of the main things that we've been uh, experimenting with the last couple of weeks is our addiction to our stupid phones, our our uh, efforts to go on an attention diet, uh, trying to you know delete Facebook and Twitter and, and all the apps from our phones and try and reconnect with reality. Uh, Zach, I don't know how far down that rabbit hole you went. I did immediately. I uh, I got rid of the Facebook, got rid of the Twitter, got rid of Instagram. But you know, as it turns out. You can still access all of those through a browser on your phone. Yes, you can. So it's it's still really easy to get there. It's and it's painfully easy because I thought, well, if it's on a browser, I'm not going to go to the trouble of going to those, but I can just keep those windows open and it's just like I have the apps. And so I have I have had some setbacks. I've spent a little bit too much time uh, you know, checking those. And I did the other day I had to reinstall Instagram. Because of the um, the program that we use to post stuff to our various channels for this show, it needs an approval from the Instagram app to actually go out. So I had to I, yeah. I caved. I had to reinstall that one. So I'm trying really hard <laughs> to not open that app. It's so tempting when it's there. After after our last show, I I decided to take a look at my well being app and see how much time I was spending on Facebook and Instagram, and I quite literally almost threw up when I saw some of the time, the, oh, the amount of time that I was wasting. How much time? And uh, it was close to over an hour on both of them together. That's a lot. Yeah. It, it was a little jaw dropping. And then of course I started to examine like, when am I spending the time uh, on these apps? And it's when I'm bored. And, you know, so I've, I, this kind of segues into what we're going to talk about later, but like I, I figured out a long time ago that I, that I eat when I'm bored, right? I'm not hungry, but I go out and I eat and I like crunchy things like Fritos and, and I've, I've gotten rid of that. But now I've noticed that like I browse Instagram and Facebook when I'm bored. So like I still have this issue with boredom that I can't just be in the moment and be okay with that because I'm still replacing it with something else. It's, it, it's so terrifying to, to realize that I can't just be in the moment. Yeah, I, I have that a lot today. I, I was biking to work today and I got to, uh, there's a bridge that's a, it's a, um, what do they call it? It's a draw bridge. And many, many times I will pull up to that bridge and it's up and I have to sit there for, you know, three, four minutes. And usually I don't have my phone uh, within reach. It's usually like in my backpack or something. But today I had it in my pocket and as soon as I stopped, I felt I'd open the back, pulled it out and check in my email. Oh yeah, I'm 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 doing work email. That's it's a legitimate use of this this bullshit. I'm I can't stand to just stand there for three minutes. Right. You know. And if you if it's the bridge I'm thinking of, it's a beautiful view right there. Oh, it's the Fremont Bridge. It's beautiful. Yeah. The, the bridge itself is a structural marvel. It's beautiful and it's colorful and it crosses this channel that looks out at another beautiful bridge and a beautiful lake and there's just plants and trees everywhere. But I had to check work email because it, of course it you couldn't did. wait you 20 gonna, minutes. I wasn't going to be you, here stuck in my office all day looking at that same email that would take four minutes of my time once I get to work to blow through what I did then. Yeah. It's, it's so and you kind of got to laugh. You got to laugh about it because otherwise you'd cry hysterically. It's true. Right? It's so stupid. It's such a dumb addiction. There's no good that comes from it. I. <sighs> Yeah. So a- after our last show, I-, I took a look at the time and I, I, I did not remove the applications, but I, I did put a, a the time limit again on on my app. So I've got 15 minutes for each one of them, and I'm hitting that time limit really quick, and it's just training me 
to not spend a lot of time on it because I've only got 15 minutes on each one. So at some point I'll, I'll lower it down to, to be even lower, but, uh, it, it's, it's the first couple of days pulling, you know, pulling my phone out and knowing that I can't open up the apps that I want to open up and realizing that the only thing I've got left is work email, which means I put the phone right back in my pocket. Yep. Yep. One app that I'm one app that I'm using a lot of though is I, I re-upped my uh, my Headspace subscription. So I've been doing a lot more meditating. Uh, they they're not a sponsor by any by any means, but uh, one thing that is kind of cool that they do now is throughout the day there are several points where they do a live meditation. So you can see that there's like 300 people and you're all meditating together. It doesn't yeah, really I saw that. it doesn't really change the experience of of your interaction with the app, but just sort of knowing that you're sharing this moment with people is a, is kind of a cool thing. So, uh, that's yeah. a, new, that's a new feature. If you're uh, dabbling in your, uh, you know, app based meditation, uh, programs or whatever. And, you know, and of course, you know, audiobooks and, and all that, I'm, I'm looking for any way to, to just, if I'm going to stare at my phone, I need to be productive it should, with it. It should be pr productive and useful. You're, you exactly. got it. Exactly. Not just mindless scrolling because I'm bored. So shifting from attention diet to actual diet, how's yours going? It's, uh, you know, I'm just going to go out there and say it's pretty shitty. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I think I've been, you know, our move is over, we're settling in, but at the same time, like, I, I think I'm, I'm still reeling from all the changes that have gone on in life. So I've, I've, I think I've been doing a lot of stress eating and, um, just, you know, looking for the quick fix and the, the dopamine rush of something crunchy and carb loaded, I, I think has, has been doing me in, mm. but it, it, it hasn't been good. My workout has been really good. Like I've been working out really, um, a lot. It's balancing it out. So like the scale's not changing really too much at all, but you know, my energy level is just horrid. And because of all the crappy food that I've been eating, you know, depression peaks are higher. And, uh, it's, it's, it's been interesting. It's, it's been, it's been a rough couple of weeks and I, I'm attributing a lot of it to, you know, if, if I wasn't eating like crap, I'd be able to kind of manage this a little bit better, but because I'm eating like crap, you know, the, the peaks and valleys are, are so much higher. Yeah, I'm I'm also not uh eating my best. I think we even talked a little bit about it uh when we got together a couple weeks ago. And I'm I'm realizing and we'll get into this a little bit in our conversation with our guest, but uh I'm I've sort of been at this point where I set a weight loss goal through uh tons of exercise and sticking to a vegetarian based keto diet. I got there. I, I met I met the the milestone. I, I Accomplished my goal. That's the words I'm trying to find. And, and I have to say it again, though. Congratulations, because it's a big goal. I know you didn't celebrate it, but you should every day. Right. Well, and and in a way, I do because I've I, the scale's not budging. I can eat whatever I want right now, and nothing seems to change. Uh, I'm, I'm I am tracking things like uh, muscle mass and bone density and, and things like that with with an app again on my phone because it distracts me. Um, and, and everything is basically holding steady. I feel shitty cause I'm not eating well and I'm not exercising in the way that I was. So it is, it, it's not, it's not working for me, even though it's working for me in terms of the numbers, it's not working for me on a, on a emotional and, you know, strength and feeling good level. Um, and so I'm, I'm sort of at this point where I'm trying to decide, do I, do I stick with what worked? Do I do it again? Do I go hardcore? keto again? And do I, you know, stick with a, a workout routine or do I change my diet? Do I experiment with something else? That's something that I am interested in talking to our guest about because she actually is a scientist. She's a, a, a health scientist for the CDC. She runs the BioCurious podcast. She's a health coach. She's got the credentials. So she's got the information that I think is going to help all of us figure out sort of a, a way forward. If you're anywhere near where we are trying to figure out what should I be putting in my body? How should I be treating my body? to maximize the results. And so you might remember if you've been listening to the show for any length of time, we first talked about biohacking in that term specifically with the guy that created it. His name is Dave Asprey. He's the founder of Bulletproof Coffee. By the way, Bulletproof, sponsor of the show. Uh, go to our website, thefitmess.com. There's a big link right there. Click that, shop away, optimize your health, support the show. It's a win-win. It's a uh, but 
more to the point, biohacking is something that, that we sort of dabble in. It's adjusting your sleep patterns. It's eating differently. It's trying different workout routines. It's trying different supplements, doing different things to, tr to sort of optimize your health. That is what Kayla Osterhoff, or BioCurious Kayla, as she's known online, focuses a lot on her show. So she joined us, and we asked her the same question. What is biohacking to you? Biohacking, the way that I explain it most, most often that anyone can kind of picture or understand, is taking control of your environment. So that means either externally, which could be like where you're living, it could be the city and pollutants that you're exposed to, it could be um, even the relationships and the people that you surround yourself with, or your internal environment, um, your biology, basically, uh, you know, your gut health, your brain health, that sort of thing, uh, taking or uh, making changes to either of those levels of environment so that you can have control over your biology, over your, your physiology, to have specific outcomes that you desire, whether that be like a wellness outcome, a health outcome, or just kind of like a life goal. So I, I've listened, I've, I'm a big fan of your podcast, by the way. Um, I, <laughs> I love, the I love the detail that you go into and, um, I will admit very freely that you've lost me a few times in the, uh, in the science, but I, abs I absolutely love it. Um, so one of the, one of the recent episodes that you talked about or that, that I listened to went into, uh, you were talking about biohacking, but, but then you mentioned that there's this underlying foundational work that you kind of need to do before you can really start biohacking. And I, I was okay. hoping to ask you about those things. What, what are those foundational pieces that we need to have in place before um, start looking into the details and, and start biohacking? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely I would say nutrition and fitness are two pillars of health that have to be at – you know, uh, basically a baseline level before you even want to start doing um, more advanced biohacks. So biohacks are typically trying to get you to that next level of performance, that higher level of performance. But you can't get to next level or higher level if you're working from an unhealthy baseline to begin with. So, of course, those kind of baseline variables when it comes to health and wellness is your fitness, your nutrition, your overall health status, whether you're dealing with uh, already like some sort of disease or some sort of illness that you have to like get back to a level state of health. Um, but I think most importantly, and, and probably the one that people forget about is mental health. Um, and by my mental health, I don't mean uh, traditional, like looking at um, at things such as depression or anxiety and that sort of thing, which definitely contribute. But I'm talking about mindset. So having a positive and powerful mindset um, that you can work from is number one. I would say that's even more important than fitness and nutrition. It's interesting you bring that up because uh, I was just having a conversation with my wife last night about my own fitness goals. And in the last uh, year and a half or so, I've lost nearly 60 pounds. I was working out a ton. My, my diet has been a lot better uh, up until very recently because I had set a goal for myself. And once I reached that okay. goal, it's been really hard to stay as committed and focused. I mean, and I reached that goal and learned I'm not done yet. I've still got a ways to go. But I haven't been able to make the mental switch that I made a year, you know, year and a half ago to commit and it's really interesting how much I'm, I'm fully aware of if I make that decision, I'll, I will see the results. I'll follow through. But I can't seem to commit to that decision. Is that something that you see a lot in, in working with your clients or working with people in this field? Absolutely. And, you know, even with myself, I am an endurance athlete. And um, just recently I, I made like the world level of athleticism. And so competing at that level, you're working amongst many high performance people, high performance athletes, coaches, that sort of thing. And it is funny how you, uh, how certain things motivate you. So like you said, when you have a problem that you're working on, um, that is 
causing you some sort of trouble in your life. Maybe you have like those extra few pounds of weight uh, and you're not fitting properly in your clothes and you're not having um, like a positive interactions um, with your colleagues or with your spouse because you're concerned about how you look or something like that, or if you're just kind of feeling sluggish because you're not uh, moving your body, that's a pretty powerful uh, motivator to get you to work towards your goals. But as you said, when everything is working kind of how you want it to work and you're not really facing any major challenges, or if you're not working any any towards any major goal that has like a deadline, then it's hard to stay motivated because everything's kind of working well and, you know, you could kind of get away with it. And humans in general, when it comes to, like, behavior change science, which is something that I studied in, with, in my public health degree, is um, humans are always looking for the path of re- least resistance, meaning that if, you know, there is no major problem or any major goal with some some pressing timeline on it then you're you're likely to lose motivation so the way that I like to keep myself motivated personally is I'll just sign up for races or I'll get like an accountability partner meaning that I will I will dedicate to going for a run or going to the gym with a certain friend and that way I have to keep myself accountable to that um goal that I've set for myself because either there's money on the line or there's somebody relying on me or I have to, you know, a certain level at a race to qualify for the next level race. So I think setting kind of these little little milestones or goals that keep you accountable will help to keep you motivated. Yeah, that is that's something I've sort of learned about myself in this journey is uh, is how much I rely on external motivators to to reach those goals, and so that's that's a good idea. I, oh I yeah, hadn't, I hadn't you know put it into that clear of perspective, so that so that's good. Uh, you mentioned uh, nutrition. I wanted to, to ask you a little bit about that because there's no end to the debate about proper nutrition online, um, especially around the field right now of of the keto diet, the low carb, high fat diet. Uh, this is something that, that Zach and I are big fans of that we both have seen a lot of success with. What does the science tell us about those kinds of diets? Uh, if you looked into the research around nutrition science, um, it's kind of like everything else where something that the research is saying is really great for us today um, in 10 years might say it causes cancer. Uh, so it's, it's very cyclic and things kind of come in and out of popularity, even from a scientific standpoint. Um, so I, I'm not a huge fan of any of these like major diets or labels, um, just because I feel like they're temporary. Like if you say the word diet, you're already, uh, you can assume that that is going to be a temporary change that you're doing for like a specific goal and it's not actually changing your eating lifestyle, which is more sustainable. So I would say for anyone, you can do the research out there, you know, the keto, uh, getting your body into ketosis and being fat adapted is a very powerful tool. And if done right, most people really thrive on that sort of high fat, low carb diet. Um, I'm not going to say that that is going to work for every single person's biology because it's just not true. And if you look into the research, you'll see some cases where it's questionable uh, as far as the efficacy, but it depends also on the goal. Um, But that being said, our brains are mostly made of fat. So if you're talking from like a performance standpoint, as far as your brain performance, fat is going to be super important um, in that aspect. So for me, what I do is I just take the concepts that are true, that ring true for me, for my biology that work really well um, from the keto diet, from the paleo diet, from low carb, from Mediterranean, from carnivore, from vegan. I just take what makes most sense from those diets and integrate that information into my own eating decisions. And so I think it's important to kind of just take these these big uh, lessons learned in nutrition science and apply them for what works best for you. But in general, cutting out 
toxic foods, so processed foods, anything that is like synthetic foods, um, is going to be a good idea generally for everyone, um, or at least limiting that stuff. Uh, Also, sugar is a major problem, especially refined sugar, Um, and it, it really does cause disease, and if it doesn't even if it's not the cause of disease, it, it uh, contributes to the progression of disease, uh, especially things like diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Even when you're looking at things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, sugar is going to be a major contributor to this. So in general, I would say cut out toxins, cut out refined sugar, all refined sugar if you can, and reduce or, or, or cut out all sugar altogether. Um, and then lastly, eat as much whole foods as close to the source as you can get them. And if you can choose organic, that's going to be a better choice just because of the toxin issue. So those are kind of like my three tips. And it doesn't matter what diet you follow, those work on any diet. So two more questions on on this field. One, you mentioned uh, what works well for your biology. And I think for me, a lot of times when I hear people talking uh, in those terms, I imagine that they've done some sort of blood testing and they're really adapting mm-hmm. what they're eating to that specific test result or whatever. Are, are, are you being that specific or is it literally just what feels good for me, what, you know, where I eat this and I suddenly feel better. I eat this, I feel like crap. I mean, can, mm-hmm. it, be, can it be that simple or, yep. you, or are you being more scientific in, in that term? I'm talking more simple. I'm talking about what any person can do and that means exactly what you said. You eat something, you feel good. You're able to do more. You're able to work towards your goals. You eat something else, you feel bad. You have less energy. You get sick. So if you listen to your body, and it can be as simple as keeping a food journal, or it could just be wearing, um, you know, your wearable, like your your Fitbit or your BioStrap or whatever it may be, and tracking your biometrics there so you can eat certain foods, see how well you do. You can check on, like, your fitness level. You can check on your sleep. You can check on your uh, heart rate variability. You can check on your blood oxygen levels. All of these things will be affected by the, by the foods that you eat because that's changing your internal environment. And so it's very simple. It could be as simple as just paying attention and doing a food journal or you can track your wearable or you know if you need a little more guidance then it's always a great idea to actually go and work with a functional doctor or a functional health coach that can look at your labs so you could get like a gut microbiome lab you can obviously do your your blood testing and you can look for certain nutrient levels and find out where your where your um where your needs are as far as what your nutritional and like stuff might be. Okay. So one more uh, on nutrition. I'm a vegetarian. Um, and, Mm -hmm. uh, and as someone who's followed a largely keto ish diet for the last year and a half as a vegetarian, that has not been easy. And it's also (laughs) meant incorporating a lot of things like beyond burgers, you know, cure like, like the meat alternative uh, products. And that, the more I read, I see a lot of people concerned about what's in those. And so I'm wondering what mm-hmm. you think. Am I basically poisoning my body by trying to <laughs> keep this moral belief in not killing animals while mm-hmm. also trying to maintain this diet? Like, how do I, how do I uh, put all that together in a way that makes sense and keeps me from poisoning myself? Yeah, so two things come to mind. Um, one is probably the obvious answer that you're looking for, which is, you, it, which goes back to something else I say is if you can avoid processed food as much as possible and, like, um, if your food, if you look at the packaging and there's a list of ingredients that is, like, as long as the whole entire box, that's not going to be a good choice. Um, you know, the ingredients list should be pretty simple and you should know what all the ingredients are on there. They should be regular actual foods um, instead of like these long chemical names that you may not even recognize. Um, So I think eating alternatives is okay if you do it the right way in that you're not just like filling your body up with all these toxins and preservatives because you're trying to replace 
of food that naturally, you know, is, is the one or two ingredients. So I think uh, just paying attention to what the ingredients are in those replacement foods. But, and I'm also not like a big fan of like shit replacement meal shakes and all of that because of the same thing. I prefer to get my food as uh, close to the natural source as possible. Um, so I don't, I don't love things that are like not coming in their natural form, like eating protein in a shake form is not my favorite thing. I do it sometimes, but, um, but yeah, I think if you can get as much of your food as close to the source naturally as possible, you're going to be better off. However, um, I totally am with you as far as not wanting to harm animals. And now we're, now we're getting back to like this mental health and mindset thing. I think that mental health and mindset is more important than nutrition. So that being said, if you're not happy or you feel like you're doing harm when you're eating animal products, then that's going to harm your mental health and your, and your mindset. So if you are happier with eating a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, then I say definitely do that because your mental health, your mind is the most important thing. Way, way to make it full circle. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zach, did you have one more here before we let her go? Yeah, I actually have just um, one question around, you know, we, we just talked a little bit about, you know, eating to make yourself feel good, but you also mentioned, you know, some testing and things like that. Um, I know for myself, um, I am a big fan of the keto uh, eating style. Um, however, if I if I do keto and I include dairy in it, I know that my cholesterol levels spike, and that's through blood testing. But I'm fortunate enough to have the means to um, you know go and get these additional tests whenever I really wanted to, and I, I found a lot of value in it, and I thought it was cool, and I, I geeked out. But you know what? Other than, you know, just feeling good, are there any other, you know, like empirical evidence-based testing that people could do at home to, you know, figure out that, you know, broccoli is making them, uh, giving them one reaction over another? Is there anything like free or cheap or low cost they can do at home rather than going and get blood testing? Yeah, I mean, blood testing is going to be your gold standard as far as testing, like, your nutrient levels, also testing, obviously, your cholesterol. Like, there is no replacement for testing your cholesterol. However, if you wanted to track something at home, like, you have no means to go to a doctor and get these labs done, I would suggest tracking your biometrics and you don't even need a wearable for that a wearable obviously makes it a lot easier but you could just uh, measure your blood pressure and you can just google how to measure your own blood pressure um, by tracking your pulse Uh, it could be that simple Um, measuring your blood pressure blood pressure is the number one uh, predictor of uh, of heart disease, um, you know, hypertension, and uh, it, it's, it's the number one predictor of things that put you at risk for heart disease, including cholesterol. So if your blood pressure is consistently high, then maybe that is your decision maker to spend the money to go and get the labs done um, or to work with a doctor. But I would say in general, if your blood pressure is consistent and it's at a healthy level and if your uh, your lifestyle practices, you know that they're at a healthy level, meaning that you feel good mentally, physically, you have you don't have like energy crashes throughout the day. Um, you don't have anything that would be concerning to make you feel like you have a health issue, um, like if your eyesight suddenly seems to get worse uh, quickly, that could be a, a major predictor or a, a sign of disease. So I'll just say like really paying attention to your physiology and the changes that are happening um, if you don't want to go and get like the physical labs done. So before we let you go, is there like one, two, three things that you would hope someone uh, who is just hearing you, hearing us, hearing about any of this for the first time that they, they should try and implement in their lives today? Yeah. So I would say number one is find out how you can 
create a positive and powerful mindset for yourself because that is going to be a cascade that uh, makes you healthier on every level of your life. Um, And for me, a lot of times it's as simple as a breathing practice. Anything that can reconnect you, your mind and body, um, is going to be a powerful tool. So just even taking a deep breath will bring you back into your body. It will give your mind a moment to pause and relax um, and really calm your nervous system, activating that parasympathetic nervous system. So we're all living in this high-stress, high- or fast-paced world, and so we need extra tools to manage stress. So number one is whatever makes you feel powerful and able to keep a positive mindset. Number two is managing your stress, however that is. If you need to take breaks, if you need to ramp up your self-care practice, if you need to uh, put some essential oils in your car so that you can smell something um, enjoyable as you're sitting in traffic, if you need to take a hot bath at the end of the night and really prioritize that, whatever it is to help you manage your your stress and get breaks, Um, which also contributes to your mindset. And lastly, I would just say there's so much information out there. There's this podcast. There's my podcast. There's all these influencers and experts of everything you can think of out there on the Internet providing their advice and recommendations, which is great. It's great that we have all of this free information at our fingertips. But I would say be your own advocate. Do your own research. And also do little experiments on yourself to see what works for you because whatever works for me, I guarantee you that same exact thing is not going to work well for you because you are unique, we're all unique, and we need to figure out what works for our uh, specific biology. Speaking of all those influencers and all that information, you're uh, you're taking this show on the road. You're going all over the world with your message. Uh, you've got a couple big events coming yeah. up. You've got a podcast. You've got a website. Tell us where we can find out about all of that information. Yeah, thank you. So uh, my podcast is called BioCurious, and it's on all the major platforms. Um, a, a lot of times we talk about uh, biohacking, and I'm talking with lots of experts in this area. Um, the... Uh, My website is biocuriouskayla.com. There's some info there. But the best place to connect with me and the easiest place is just on Instagram, uh, biocurious underscore Kayla. If you direct message me, um, I check that multiple times a day, and I always respond to every single person that sends me a message. So if you have a question or if you just want to say, hey, I would love it if you reached out to me there. And like you mentioned, yeah, I am. Uh, I do have a biohacking mastermind retreat happening in Iceland this September, and that's actually uh, directly following the Health Optimization Summit, which I will also be at. And um, if you want a discount to the Health Optimization Summit, you can use the code BioCuriousKayla for 20% off your ticket. Um, and then if you are interested in the Iceland trip, reach out to me, uh, direct message me, and I will let you know about um, some discounts happening around that as well. Lots of good stuff. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this conversation and for interacting with us on Instagram where we found each other. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun following your work and uh, a really good conversation. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's interesting how the the phrase biohacking, it really does seem intimidating, but it's just, it's it's like we talk about on the show. It's about making small changes in your life. It's it's as intimidating as you want it to be. It's like our guest Kayla Osterhoff said, so many of these things, it's it's all individual. No one thing is going to work for everybody. And even the term biohacking is not going to work for everybody. Some people think it's geeky and nerdy and weird. But ultimately, it just comes down to, like you said, making small changes. And you can get as extreme with it as you want. You like to go to the labs and get your blood work done every other day. You know, I, I go to bed at different times. I eat different things. It's it's whatever you want it to be. But as long as you're somehow tracking the progress, even if it's just mentally, how do I feel when this? How does my body respond when this? That's yeah. that's all it is. That's all biohacking is. And Ultimately, you know, I've I've been thinking a lot about uh, the last couple of years of my life and how almost 60 pounds ago, talking to you shortly after deciding to to stop drinking and 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 all that, 
deciding that I was just going to, oh, I'm just going to try and only eat 100 grams of carbs a day. Let's, let's see what that does. Mm-hmm. And like she said, it's this cascading thing. You knock one door down, another one opens, you knock that one down. Like you just keep going through these different stages when you're paying attention to what you're doing and following through on the things that are working and stopping the things that are not working. It's as, it's that simple. <laughs> it, it's simple, <laughs> but it's incredibly hard. That's yes, the thing. Yes, it is. It is very, it's not easy, but it is simple. Uh, that's, it's, it's really easy to talk about the things that you need to do. Actually doing them is, is you're right. It's incredibly hard because I mean, to be blunt about it, I mean, we're, there's an addiction aspect to all of these other things that we're doing to our bodies that, that we shouldn't be doing. Well, and that addiction is a response to the lifestyle that we live in, you know, a Western society. And I'm not saying Western society is inherently bad, but we're constantly bombarded by stress, financial stress, family stress, work stress. Like there's always something. There's so yep. little time to just reflect and take stock of what you're doing and what's not like it's you have to make time for it and not everybody has it i would argue nobody has it but it just has to become a priority if it's something that is important to you and i, I don't know that that even feels judgy to say because i'm sitting here you know having not significantly worked out in a while my diet's kind of off the rails i'm not really sure what to do but i haven't taken the time to just reflect and go honestly what am i going to do let's let's set a goal and make a plan and do it because right. it's hard to do. No, it's all about prioritization. Everyone's got the same number of hours in the day. It's yep. what you do with them that matters. Exactly. I do want to mention we have a, a terrific new guest blogger that is uh, creating content for us on our website, thefitmess.com. She's my cousin. I should disclose that. But the Be Well Mama Beth has been writing some some great stuff for us on our website. I hope you'll check it out. Uh, and and welcome to those of you that found us through her. I'm I'm really glad to be working with her. Um, and so it's, it's a fun thing that we both seem to be on this trajectory in our lives right now that, that, ma- that matches up well to, uh, I think, help us both sort of get the word out on how important it is to take care of yourself, because it is something I feel like we're both sort of learning, uh, again at this point in our lives. Yeah, no, I, I'm super excited that she's writing and, uh, is part of the community with us. All right. Well, before we go, we also want to mention our other sponsor, Bravest Brewing Company. Uh, it's a d- delicious non-alcoholic beer selection that they have for you. You can get uh, beers delivered to your house. Go to the link on our website, thefitmess.com, and use the the promo code FITMESS10. Get 10% off your order. And I've you know I've been dabbling. I've been uh, going to the Total Wine, trying some other non-alcoholic beers. Got to say, I think we hooked up with the with the uh, the leader in this industry. They make some quality stuff. I agree. I've tried. I've tried a bunch of the other ones as well, and uh, I keep going back to Bravis. And I mean, it's flavorful. It's it it's it's like the real thing, and there's there's no there's no downside. Yeah. Other than the carbohydrates, but you know, a few carbohydrates are good for you. Hey, after a ten mile bike ride, I'm going to give myself that beer. It's just the way it's going to yeah, go. It's just the way exactly. It's gonna go. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Thank you again to our guest, Kayla Osterhoff from BioCurious, the podcast. You can find a link to her show on our website or just uh, Google her on uh, whatever podcast platform you prefer. But that's all for now. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with a new episode. You can find it at thefitmess.com or wherever podcasts are sold. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. We know this podcast is amazing and does not seem to lack anything. But we still need a legal disclaimer. Jeremy and Zach are not doctors. Please consult your physician prior to implementing any changes that you heard on this podcast. The listener assumes that Jeremy and Zach do not know what they're talking about and that you'll do your own research on the topics talked about in this podcast. The hosts of this podcast are not liable for any physical or emotional issues that might occur directly or indirectly as a result of listening to this podcast.